Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to be solving the leak code question, count negative numbers in a sorted matrix. So in this question, we're given a n by n matrix grid, which is sorted in non-increasing order, both row-wise and column-wise. So note that it's both row-wise, so left to right, it's sorted, and column-wise, so from down to bottom. And non-increasing just basically means descending order. So we're given this grid over here, and uh, instead of just showing it into uh, as a form of list of lists, uh, let's just draw out the grid and it'll be easier to understand. So let me just open that up real quick. All right, so this over here is the grid that we're given. And so my first solution when I thought about this right away was to iterate through each and every one of these uh, numbers and to come up with a solution by increasing the count. So this is a very naive and basic approach. And if you don't understand what it is, so we go to four, three, two, then over here we found one of the negative numbers. So we're gonna add a count of one. Then we're gonna do it again, and we find a second negative number, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So this is a very brute force or naive approach where we're visiting each and every one of the cells. But one thing we really need to keep in mind while solving this problem is the fact that the grid is sorted from left to right. So look, it's in descending order in each of the rows and in each of the columns, when you go from up to down, you're decreasing. So this is a very important pattern and we can see how we can utilize this to our advantage. So just for uh, the purpose of this video, I'm gonna change this value to a one instead of a negative one. Okay, so now that we have this, this is how we're gonna solve our problem. So we know that this question moves, so from left to right, we're getting smaller in terms of value. So we know that the top right value, so in a, in a row, the rightmost value is going to be the smallest, no matter what. And we're gonna use that same logic and try to utilize it here. So we're gonna start off with the first row. So it's this row over here. And we're going to go to the rightmost, whatever is in the rightmost. And in this case, it's a value of one. So the right, when the rightmost element itself is a positive value, that means that anything to the left is going to be either the same as that value or greater than. So in other words, if the rightmost value is positive in this case, that means that we're, that whole entire row is not going to have anything negative. So we can just cross this off and we can skip the entire row. Since the smallest element is not negative, how can the rest of it be? Okay, so using the same logic, uh, we're now going to go to the second row. And again, we're going to go to the rightmost element. And as you can see, the rightmost element is negative. So we have negative one, and we're going to take this element over here into account. Now we come to another logic, which is the fact that this grid over here is also sorted vertically. What that means is from up to down, we're decreasing or the same. So if this value is negative one, the value below it is going to be equal to negative one or less than that, right? So we can take into account that this value over here and this value, no matter what, are going to be equal to negative one or less than since this is negative one. So now we can account for this value here, this value here, and this value. So now we got three values and we got the entire rightmost column. So now what we're gonna do is since we check this, we're going to check this value over here. And this value over here is positive. So we can just cross it out. And now we're done with this entire row and we can move on to the next row. So in the next row, it's, we don't need to go to the rightmost element since we already accounted for it. So we're just gonna to go to this element over here. So in this case, it's gonna be this one over here. Right, so I meant to say whatever is at this index, which for this row is this one over here. So once we're over here, we're gonna check if it's negative and it is. So when this is negative, we know it for a fact that this value is gonna, so we're gonna add this to our count and we are also going to add one more value or what, how many ever values of everything below it. So everything below it is going to be equal to negative one or lesser. So we're going to, in this case, we're gonna add negative two as well. So we got this and we got this, cool. And now we're gonna move our pointer to the left by one. So we're gonna be over here. We're gonna see if this value is negative uh, and it's not. 
So that means that nothing else is negative in that row. So now we're going to go to the next row. And this over here is our last row. So again, we're going to start off from here. And since it's our last row, we know that there's not going to be anything underneath it. So if you find a negative value, we're just going to increase it by one. So over here, we're going to increase our value by one. And since it's the last row, we need to check for each of our elements. So now we're going to go to the left by one. So we go here and this value is also negative. So that means we're going to add that to our count as well. And this over here is the most optimized way we can do it. And there, and if, um, and one more way you could possibly do it is, so I started from the top right over here. You could do the same starting from the bottom right. And uh, starting from the top right or the bottom right is going to be the same time complexity. So let's see uh, how this solution looks like in action. Okay, so let's just write the code for it pretty quickly and it should be pretty simple. So we're going to start off by initializing a few variables. So we're going to store our row length. So the length of our uh, row, so row length, and that's just going to be the length of grid and we're just going to look at whatever's at the zeroth index. And now we're going to get the number of columns, so column length, and this is just going to be the number of lists we have inside of the list of lists. So we could just do length grid. So this will give us the number of columns we have. After this, we're going to initialize two variables, i and j. So i is going to correspond to our row and j is going to correspond to our column. So i is going to start off at the value of zero. So uh, this represents a row. So we're starting at the first row. And j is going to start off at a value of the length of our column minus 1. Uh, we're doing minus 1 because we're going to that index. And finally, we're going to have a value. I'll call it total. And this is what is going to count how many negative numbers we have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of a while loop. And in this while loop, we're going to have two conditions. One is going to be while i is less than the column length. And uh, while i is less than the column length, what that does is it checks whether we are at the last index or not. And we're also going to check for one more condition, which is if j is greater than or equal to zero. And this, what this does is it checks whether we are at the first value or not. So those are the two while conditions we have. And now let's go inside of our while loop. So over here, we're going to check if the value is negative. So to do that, all we have to do is if grid, we're going to give it i, and then we're going to give it j value index. And if that is less than zero, so if it's negative, then we're going to increase our total by the column length minus the current i value we are on. So that is going to give us uh, the, that is going to include whatever index we're on and everything underneath of it. And after we do that, we're going to decrease the j value by one. And also doing it's moving one step to the left. So j minus equals one. So we're decreasing it by one. And else, if this is not the case, so if uh, we do have a positive number, then all we're going to do is we're going to move down one row. Since if it's a positive number, that means that nothing else is going to be negative. So we're going to just move down one row. So i plus equals one, and that should be it. So at the end of this, after our while loop, and if you still didn't understand, our while loop is going to end once we reach the bottom left. And once that happens, we're just going to return our total. And that should be it. So let's submit our solution. Okay, so I made a small mistake over here. So j actually represents, uh, it's going to be the row length for j. So sorry, row length. Since j is what moves left or right, so we need to give it the row length. Okay. So this should fix our problem. So let's submit it. Okay, and yeah, so as you can see, our solution is working. Uh, we got a pretty faster than 89% and uh, memory usage less than 91%. So they're pretty good numbers. And thanks a lot for watching and do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you guys, bye.